Hi, this is Chris from codereview.co.uk and in this video we're going to be looking at getting Bootstrap into your Symphony 2 project. So this is a kind of a follow-up to a video that I did a while back on YouTube of how to get Bootstrap into Symphony 2.3 um, and it was quite a long video and there was a reason for that which I will cover in a sec but some of the people that watched it said this video is too long for what you're trying to achieve and I'm in agreement with them in some respects uh, but disagree um, politely in other respects. So what I'm going to show you is the most simplest way of getting Bootstrap into your project and it, it is really straightforward. We, at the moment we've just got a standard HTML page and if we look in here you can see it, it literally is empty. There's nothing in there. We're no, no Bootstrap so what we're going to do is just give you a quick overview of what we've got. It's a completely brand new generated bundle. We've got a, a default controller We've got an index, a standard. I've stripped out the the name thing that comes in there. Um, just updated the routing as well to remove that. It's normally uh, slash hello and then a name. So I've removed the the variable and whatnot, and I'm not passing that into the template. But aside from that, we don't really need to see the controller after this point. There's no controller logic um, for this section. And then we've got this index template that that controller was rendering, and that extends the base. This double colon thing literally just means the the app uh, resources folder and then because we're not in a subfolder of that like you can see um, views default so um, that in, when we look in the controller whoops wrong one you can see that it's got this default thing in the name of the bundle what this is just basically saying is there's no bundle name we're not in a subfolder so it's just colon colon and a base sorry for a little sidetrack there but it's uh, one of the things that you may have never really understood why it just says that but anyway there you go so that's our basic template and to, to get bootstrap into this all we need to do is go to bootstrap go to getting started and then there's a few different ways we can do it we can either download the whole bootstrap palaver um, we can compile from well not compile as such but use less or uh, SAS to to build our, our files so that if we're doing any customization or whatever or we can literally just copy these in and these are self-hosted by bootstrap on on a cdn so that's what we're going to do um i'm just going to drop these in so i'm not even using the, the blocks here they're just there for future and then we also need even though it doesn't tell us this we do need jquery uh to get this to work so i'm just going to copy that out as well and then i'm going to drop this in just above our javascript block I'm going to head over to cdnjs.com. I'm just going to get jQuery off, off this as well, jQuery. I'm just going to copy that in. And the reason that, I'm just get rid of that as well, I think, um, is it Alt and Up? Yeah, Alt and Up, Delete, and just paste that in. So what we've got there is we're loading jQuery first, then we're loading Bootstrap CSS, uh, sorry, Bootstrap minified javascript library that so that's this all of bootstrap files because if we look at bootstrap um, and we go to the javascript section there's all these different individual things that are all separate files but you can actually just get the all of them in one so bootstrap um, one of the things about it is quite modular but no one that i've ever come across just uses it in that way most people just go dump in the whole everything and, uh, and that's why you use this minified or you can just use the full unminified version but most people will just go with the full minified version so if we then save that and we go back to our web page and refresh you can see now that the styles have been applied so we get a slightly different look and feel but that doesn't really prove anything um, for me so if we go to uh, one of the examples oh, I think I should have gone to the getting started examples and then we'll just pick the most basic one that we can see um, uh, sticky footer looks good and then we can just view source and in here there's probably some custom styles that, that are required for this but I'm just going to nick everything there from there and then if again if we look at our, our base you can see that we have this block body which lives inside our actual body I mean this could be called anything maybe we'll just call it content or something and then in our in index we're going to have to rename that bit but what we can do is just paste in that and we should in theory see that come up or something very similar so yeah obviously if you look at the the sticky footer template it's got it's a lot thinner uh, but that's because they've used that uh, custom CSS so there must be something in there that's yeah shrinking the where are we uh, 
container max width 680 so that's what we're doing there we're just uh, keeping that container a little thinner but that's essentially bootstrap css working straight with your project the reason that i say in the in the previous video you know we this has been a much quicker um example of how you do stuff and how you get bootstrap working in the previous video what i was doing was using aesthetic so that's a symphony bundle uh, it's not actually developed by the symphony guys it's i, I think I best not say who it was by and just guess, um, but I know it was like it's a third party tool. And what it does, as I said, when you go to um, Bootstrap, you've got all these different ways of uh, having Bootstrap sort of included with your projects. So you can, you know, as I say, you can manually do it or whatever. You can put it in there and you can use less and SAS and stuff. Uh, the reason aesthetic, so in the last video, what I was doing was using, um, I think it was SAS. It might have been less, but one of the two. And I I was running it through Aesthetic. So if you do anything with like a, if your web page that you're building with Symfony these days is public facing, so if it's out on the internet, Google these days puts quite a lot of emphasis on site page load speed. Um, and what Aesthetic will do for you is it will compress. So say you've got, say if we go back into our template here and in here, say for example, we had, well, let's just say we've got like 20 different JavaScripts like that. Not Obviously, that's just, you know, garbage. But say that was like A, that was B, C, whatever. And then when Google loads that up, uh, sorry, when a, when a user comes to your web page, they've got to load. Firstly, they've got to download jQuery. Then they've got to get Bootstrap. Then they've got to get this A, then the B. And all each one of those files it takes, you know, a little bit of overhead. But it's a little bit of overhead adds up to be quite a lot. Now, when you get to a properly big site, that you can have tons and tons of JavaScripts, and what Aesthetic will do, along with your CSS. So again, you could you could have this similar situation with your CSS. You might have loads of little things that are sort of overriding or or whatever. And the more of those that you add, the more stuff that that, that your client's got to download or your your user's got to download. And what Aesthetic will do is take everything that's inside these style sheet blocks and these JavaScript blocks, and then it will run it through various filters which you specify, as I went through in the video, and it will compress everything down, so it compresses this entire block, say they were in your JavaScripts, like this. Um, it will go through, and this is, a, this is a, a, a bad example as such because these are external files, but it will go through and it will compress these down into one file so at the end of it when you're actually going to prod you've only got one file and it, it would have like a, f a funny name as well on it which allows you to do stuff like cache busting if if in the future you decide that you want to change that off but that's the reason that that video took so long really um what effectively this this is the same process that you would go through for if you was going to do foundation as well so i can very quickly show you if you've never heard of foundation it's like an, an alternative to bootstrap um it's not quite as popular but that's got its benefits because um bootstrap's kind of everywhere these days so if we went to let's just close some of these down and close that one down as well and we go to foundation zerb examples i think it is and then in here is it this one i think it's templates they, they, these guys website is just not quite as good as get bootstrap uh, but what they've got is is really cool i won't go into it too much but it's just as you can see foundation.zerb.com and then we take out this blog one and we can just oops if we go to view the source so what we could do is go in here and in fact we can get rid of that as well index we can get rid of everything in there and then what we could do make sure that everything's okay we just close that off and we change this off to foundation zerb because obviously that counts not but there we go and then you can see in here that we need a style sheet so we need the foundation css and we can just do foundation in here it's really cool actually cdn uh, cdn JS. Let's just go into foundation, is it? And I think in here, yep, you get the minified CSS. So we can just stick that in. Yeah, that one. Actually, I'll just cheat a little bit and stick that in there. Whatever. I'm not going to go back and change that now. And then also, we can use the 
cdnjs for the minified doodah and we'll just drop that in there as well I don't worry I'll come back to that in a sec and then of course we need jQuery again although I'm not even going to show that so don't worry about about the JavaScripts in fact let's just get rid of that bit but that would be the same in, in terms of that um, you would do the same process you stick Java, uh, jQuery in and then foundation just underneath it and then if we look at the the actual content we can just go ahead and nick everything in here so let's go from the body down yeah that's not going to work for some reason these Macs they won't allow you to scroll down kind of weird but you can see there you've got to put in jQuery and then the foundation JS and you can just get them as I, as I showed you yeah from there basically so it's same deal um, I'm just going to copy this out completely and go into our index paste that in with a bit of luck if we refresh you can see we've got a completely different look and feel so obviously it needs to put in the jQuery side of it but that is in a nutshell how you do it super quick now the disadvantage to that of course is you've got this situation where you've got many different style sheets been loaded up um, and many different JavaScripts which is why you would run it through Aesthetic uh, but that's for a different video and a different audience I guess uh, but there you go